Hi everyone, it's Heidi from flutterbyheidi.co.uk. I'm Heidi Smith and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator based in the United Kingdom. And today I'm working with some new products. Um, and this is the lovely, uniquely artistic stamp set, which you can see here. It's on page uh, 114 of the annual catalogue. And it's this lovely two-step stamping. So you've got fabulous floral images and leaves and they're really pretty. And they sort of have this lovely um, distinctive um, uh, stamp to fill in the in inner on those and then the just for you comes from this lovely limited edition stamp set and this is great for if you wanted to sell your cards made with stamping up products you have to um, add the copyright stamping up and these have them on all of these um, stamps apart from the just for you and the paper hug um, and there's one on its own as well so you've got lots of opportunities but if you um, you know if you are, are, are just making them to gift then you know you, you don't have to worry about it um, but I just think it's a great fun stamp set and certainly when I um, sell mine I think this hand stamped um, one is absolutely fabulous so that's limited editions that's my just for you um, and this is the stamps that I've used for decoration and I've used some of the gorgeous new in colours to create this lovely little box and this is more than just a little box um, I've used some of the metallic ribbon you can see here just open that up but it's also a gift card holder and you can see it's a little flap it opens up and it's a little chocolate box so it holds six chocolates um, of this sort um, those other diplomatic chocolates um, would also fit in here and you can see the panel here for you to write your sentiment oh, obviously you don't have to put chocolates and you could put a little gift in as and instead um, but it's rather nice when you're giving a gift card it's kind of a bit boring really um, at times although I always think it is, it's the gift of shopping but you could pop the receipt as well the, the bit that tells them how much is on that gift card if it's not one with the value um, and as I say it just pops in a slot there and then ties up so that's what I'm making and I thought um, we'll start off with our stamping uh, in fact let, I'll cut the, the piece of white to start off with um, so I'm going to need some pieces of card so I need two pieces of card for the front and the inside so I need a piece that is um, six and a half or two pieces to six and a half by ten so I've cut my card at ten I'm just going to cut those two pieces. So those are for the front and for the inside. I then want um, two side pieces. So again, those are 10 centimetres and the sides are three centimetres. So I can cut a couple of those from that. That little scrap will be perfect for adding our sentiment to. So those are my two sides. I'm going to cut another piece um, now at three centimetres. And I want two pieces um, that are, uh, da, 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 where are my side ends, which is six and a half centimetres. So those are my two ends. And then on the inside, I've added a couple of pieces here as well. So these are again 10 centimetres. Um, let me just check the width of that. Is that? Oh, I'm not going to quite get those out. Okay. So I'll just do a 10 centimetre piece. And um, those are three and. I, I haven't made note of those. So those three and a half I think yes they are I knew they were slightly wider so I need two pieces that are three and a half so I'm actually going to put those to this side to remind me that those are slightly different okay then we've got a scrap paper which I'm going to stamp the flowers onto as well now I've made this one in the lovely orchid oasis oh what I didn't show you was actually the inside is lined so when you take those chocolates out you don't see any joins on the inside there and that reinforces the box as well so it's really sturdy um, so uh, here we go I'll do that as well in a moment okay so that one was an orchid oasis um, and lined with starry sky so I thought I'd make this one out of starry sky but I thought I might actually add the orchid oasis flowers in so I'm going to just stamp 
water those flowers first. And I'm going to stamp off to get that lighter shade. Now, I've got this lined up before. There we go. Put it upside down. I'm probably this is probably one of those I'm going to I'm going to put a mark on to say which way um, is up. I'm sure it'll be fine once. So this is where what I do is is when I've got worked out which way is the up. I just grab a marker, which I probably haven't got one to hand. Um, okay, but if you imagine this is a dark marker, I will just put an arrow saying that way up, and then on my image, I will also put an arrow going up. And that way, particularly when I'm in the class, it's easy for people to see which way up those flowers go. You can see the arrow on there. And likewise, you just see it on the inside there. Just a, one of those things that I, that I do um, helps me. So hopefully it might help somebody out there. Um, so it's, yes, so I've used two flowers and I've just cut one apart slightly. Um, there aren't any dyes with, uh, with this one, but the, um, I think it's, it's pr most of the time I would probably do a bit of, maybe a bit of masking. Um, Either way, they're nice, simple shapes to, to cut out. So I'm just going to cut these out. Now, if you wanted to, you could cut three out. I was just being sort of quite lazy, really, and kind of going for the minimum amount of fussy cutting. So there we go, there's one flower. I rather like it in the Orchid Oasis actually. It's rather pretty, isn't it? I do think it's a lovely colour. Um, lovely use of purpley blue. I do, I'm a sucker for a purple. There we go. Obviously what I could have, I could have stamped it in Starry Sky and then stamped in, but I think that's still quite, it's quite a deep colour. Um, and I just think you need a little bit of contrast as well. So this flower I'm actually going to cut apart so I've got a couple of pieces and you don't want to just cut it in half. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of come in um, probably across here. I'm just going to sort of cut that swell. So it's kind of extending the flower slightly you can see there. So that's my floral image for the front. So there's my two ends, there's my two sides and my inside piece. So I'm go also going to use another new in colour. So this is Parakeet Party. This does remind me of the beautiful lemon lime twist we had. It isn't the same but it is, it is lovely and bright. So for the inside where I'm going to um, write my message I'm just going to add a couple of little um, floral images on there for my main front I'm almost kind of using this a little bit like a frame so I'm just going to, sorry. so I'm just adding that and the side here There. And then for the um, sides, I'm simply stamping once with that image because it's such a uh, quite a large image. So it obviously, it, as you can see, it really covers most of those sides. Certainly enough for what I'm wanting to do. Um, then you can either repeat stamp, which is what I did for the for these two inner panels. I, I use the leaf stamp um, to add in those. I'm actually, or you can come in with this big one again, which I think is what I might do. No, I won't actually. And the reason I won't is because what I want to do is remind myself which which one's which. 
So I'm just kind of creating my own DSP really with this. So I will come in and just add little bits of extra leaf here. And you can see there where I've put a nice smudge mark. I'm just going to so quite simple stamping there. Okay, and then with these side and top and bottom panels. I'm going to use the infill. So by that I mean uh, this is the the stamp that has the kind of um, the shading on it. So we're, again we're going to stamp off. So I need to put that to one side. Those two can go to one side, and it's these images here I'm going to use. So I'm just going to ink up my stamp, stamp off once, and then line that up over the top. And that will just colour that in for me. And on that one particularly where I kind of haven't quite put an even stamp down, it just covers that. So just hover over the top until you're happy that the image is there. And it's almost kind of like a watercolour wash over the top of it. So all of those pieces can go to one side um, and I do tr try and remember to do this with you. I try and remember to um, put them to one side so, so they don't smudge when I pick them up. So let's grab some Starry Sky for my sentiment. So I'm just, you can see, just taking a little scrap of basic white here and I'm just going to ink up the edge and then come in on there. So I'm obviously going to trim around that so we won't get that mark at the top. So while all of those pieces are coming together, then we can start creating our uh, box itself. So you're going to need a sheet of A4 cardstock um, measurements, I suppose, uh, yeah, I should say, as usual, um, I have done them in inches, or most of them. I haven't done the lining yet in inches. Uh, I've got to still to work that one out. Um, so I'll put the inches dimensions on my blog. Uh, but I have designed this so that it can be made with US cardstock as well. It's designed to be out of, a, out of an 11 inch piece. So on the width, you're trimming this down to, in this instance, 19.5. and then I'm trimming it down to 28 centimetres. So that just gives me a little lay, which I'll use in a moment. On this long edge then, we are going to score at, probably can't see that, maybe just rearrange stuff. There we go. Okay, so we're going to score, let's start again, at the long 7, 10 .5, 17.5, 21 and 25. And that end is where we're going to have our gift card holder. On the short, I'm going to score at one centimetre, so I'm just doing that on the right hand side first. Um, at four and a half, 4.5, to make sure that's butted up well. At 15, and at 18.5. So that's my scoring. Next thing we're going to do is actually reinforce all of those score lines uh, because that will, it's twofold. Um, one, it, it, we're making a box and we need to do it to get a really nice 
um, dimensions. Uh, nice sort of uh, sides, all uh, nice and square. And also it'll make it easier for me to show you where to cut as well. Okay. We will need our trimmer again in a minute. Uh, we'll want it for our lining and also to cut a slot for that gift card as well. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut up on this end, this one with the, with the two um, shorter panels, and we're going to cut that away. I'm just going to grab one of the scissors, those ones are a little bit sticky, again, so same on the other side. And then we're going to do the same on this end as well. So we're going to, on this large panel, cut down the side of the long panel and trim away. Then we're going to create our tabs to make our box, so I'm going to cut straight down the side of this centre longer panel and notch that out. See that? Again, the other end the same, so cut straight down the side of the longer panel, notch out, and I'm just trimming that extra bit away as well. And it doesn't matter, I mean I've cut those a little bit short, just take away a bit of the bulk. Let's flip it around, do exactly the same on the other side. Because I'm putting the lining in, I'm just reducing the, let's say, reducing the bulk a little bit on there. So there we go. So you should have a piece now that looks like that. This is where our gift card is going to go. And I'm just going to measure in at a centimetre from each end and make a mark on that score line. And if you bring the trimmer back in, just fold those tabs in butt it up nice and you're just going to come slightly to the side of that score line and cut between those two marks. Then move it over very slightly and do the same again. So you've got a couple of score lines, just a couple of cut lines just between those two marks. And the other thing you could do is, if you're not confident doing that, is if you fold it, you could then cut along that edge as well. That's another way of doing it. And then just trim that out. Now what you need to do is put a little bit of, um, I'm going to use my fine tip glue, just right along the very edge of this. Um, if you haven't got fine tip glue, then you could put... Um, uh, some um, fine adhesive tape or if you wanted you could just glue down the sides um, and leave it open at the bottom because we're going to put a panel on there which will cover up the bottom so it doesn't matter if, if it's a little bit um, if, 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 it, if it sits in slightly longer so that panel can go in there now so I'm just going to use a bit of Tombow those two pieces. So again we're going to put these uh, layers on now while it, our box is unconstructed 
because it's just easier. So the only thing you need to be aware of is obviously where, where, where pieces are going to be and that's why I've kind of done these leaves the way I have. So I'm going to kind of put the curved bit on the bottom of each of, the, of, each of these um, ends. So I'm going to put the curve towards that centre piece. That one's still got to be made and this um so i just want to put my side pieces on last one And with these again, you know, if you put them up upside down, you know, there isn't a direction, there's no right or wrong way, so it really doesn't matter too much if that's the case. I'll put my um, flat layer on. Like so. And then I'm going to add my flowers. And to do these, I'm going to grab my bone folder, just add a bit of dimension by shaping with your bone folder and I'm going to add a, just a single dimensional into the corner there before adding my flower and I'm going to do the same with each of these sort of parts of the flower and just a dimensional and then that can tuck underneath there and this one underneath bottom and the only bit I've now misplaced of course is my just for you right so this is the bit where <laughs> I have fun and games because I am not very good at cutting a straight line there's a reason I use a trimmer so I'm just going to come in there if you can do it in one cut that's the best way because then you're using the scissors to keep it and then at the end just straight up like so and I probably end up cutting slightly away from it just in case I get it wrong so I'm using one of my scraps grabbing the glue that's nearest to me and I'm just going to lay that into make a mess into the corner there so I've already got two of my sides already layered So I can just trim off my excess on so dealing with a smaller piece. Come in and then just add that as a little layer. And again, just pop in with a dimensional or a part of a dimensional as I happen to have on the side here. A couple of sheets I had for a class, which I've got a half sheet left over. that in there so we've got to, uh, to add our adhesive so you can use your seal plus for this or you can use red tape and um, just a couple of pieces of, of the um, seal plus pop it on the end you know as close as you can to that um, to that score line because you want the side of the box to join together well like so so just come and match that up in the corner each of those and like so and then we just need to make our lining so the lining is really easy we're just going to want a piece of card that's 13.6 by 17.1. Now if you've got DSP, you could do it with DSP if you wanted. So 13.6 and 17.1. And then you're going to score on all four sides at 3.4. So I'm just measuring that on the right hand side here. 
because that means I can butt I, most of my card is then supported across the top bar and then scoring up from the bottom upwards and then quite simply on this I'm going to just cut each of those corners and I'm just making sure that I'm coming just to the side of that score line so taking the score line you're just it's rather than going down the middle just making sure I'm coming and sort of on the inside of it by that I mean sort of to the towards the middle of the card and then I'm going to fold those up and then to make it as neat as I can I'm going to pop that like so and then for the ribbon what I actually did here was I measured halfway along with my ruler which I should have done this while it was while it was flat I knew there's something I hadn't done okay so I'm just measuring 5.25 on each side made life difficult for myself but there we go well folding that back and I'm just going to put my hole punch in there and just kind of just notch out a little touch what I'd intended to do was actually thread it through but there we go I didn't so such is life um pop a bit of, of stamp and seal or red tape on the inside of that so I'm just going to grab because I happen to have it to hand and it's easier having made my box because again it would have been easier to do it the other way so if you just pop that down below where the hole is you probably can't see that very well there you go just down below where you've punched that hole vertically take the tape off and then what we want is a couple of pieces of our lovely metallic starry sky ribbon so I want a piece I don't know what's that that's about nine inches and then I want a piece that's going to come probably about that's probably about 12 inches on that so the longer piece in this instance I'm just going to pop it through that hole just threaded that through and just stick it to the piece of tape you've got on the inside the same on the other side again so I've just added that in and then you can glue this in if you want to but all I'm going to do is just fold that up and just pop my layer at each end like so and so you just add a bit of glue and that will be absolutely fine grab your chocolates whatever are your preference with these ones I have to light them down because otherwise that it pops up with the um, chocolate um, wrapper that's on there add a little bit of glue to the inside to the side of my obviously I would write on my panel or I'd recommend you write on it first just pop that in grab your gift card don't happen to have a spare gift card handy I've usually got several kicking around old gift cards we go there we go so the gift card just slides into that slot there pop it in and you'll see it just fits so you can bring your ribbon around recommend putting that extra turn in that just to hold it tight while you tie it being metallic it just springs a little bit but there we have our pair of fun chocolate and gift card boxes ready to make that gift card gift 
a little more special by adding a chocolate treat. So there we go. Thanks for watching. Let me know how you get on. Um, pop back and see me again soon and please do hit the like and subscribe button. Uh, it does make a big difference to me. And if you'd like to purchase any of the items, the links are in my um, in the description box below this video and uh, also on my on my blog at flutterbyhydra.co.uk where you'll find the measurements as well. Thanks for watching. Come back soon. Bye.